This episode of The Designer Motive is sponsored by Blueland. Buy the bottle once, refill forever, all without the plastic waste. It is a minimalist style, but when you incorporate some of these textures, it sort of becomes a bit more. When I first saw it, my wife found it online and we drove past and I said, no, I'm not interested because I saw the front of it and I was like, uh, it wasn't for me and I didn't think there was anything that could be done with it. And then she convinced me to come and do an inspection. And as soon as I walked into our now master bedroom, it had the original ceilings and I was like, okay, we can do something with this. The, the site itself is in Brunswick West, in Melbourne's inner north. There's a lot of mixes of architecture styles from sort of post-war to cottage to Victorian weatherboard style houses. The site itself is quite deep for this area and also has the added benefit of rear access. It also has north facing to the side of the block, so we were trying to maximise the amount of light into the dwelling by orientating a lot of the house toward the north. The existing house was a 1950s post-war. Over the years it had undergone some typical, I'm going to call it Melbourne Mediterranean updates. Lots of columns at the front, some intricate detailing in some of the bedrooms and lots of tack-ons as the house sort of developed over time. The front two rooms were quite nice, had lots of nice detailing, but as you got further into the house it became quite dark and almost like a rabbit warren. When Jesse came to me, he said he'd bought this house and he wants to have a look at how he can make it a bit lighter and brighter. We had a look through the house and he mentioned that he really liked the cornicing and the detailing in the front portion of the house and being a builder he really liked to keep that because he loved the craftsmanship. We wanted to add a few bedrooms, walk-in robe en suite, and also a big part of it was having a guest suite at the back of the house, which he has parents visiting from the coast often. There's also a garage and a workshop at the back. We wanted to use as much of the existing footprint of the building as possible. So that was the blueprint for what ended up being the end design. Pretty much gutted the inside to try and make it work within the parameters that they wanted, which meant turning the house around so it faced north, creating as much light as possible, adding the bedrooms, and then trying to make that work with an aesthetic that we referenced from the existing dwelling and the neighbourhoods. But effectively, what we were just trying to do is just maximise the living space and get as much northern light into it as possible. The main challenges we faced was basically having to redo everything. We've replaced all the windows, re-bricked up a lot of the front facade and basically shuffled the whole house around. So we took out a lot of low bearing walls, which was a little tricky. It doesn't look like much, but there was a lot of work going on in the ceiling before we were able to remove those walls and get the overall floor plan that we envisioned. So as you enter the house, we have the existing footprint of the old post-war homes. Cornicing and the detailing of those rooms was something that was important for us to maintain. As you walk through, we tried to keep that as the sort of sleeping quarters of the house. So all the bedrooms, bathrooms and robes are kept at that front section of the house where it's a little bit darker. And then as you progress through the hallway and enter out into the sort of the new section of the house, I suppose you'd call it, the ceilings lift, the paint is, is lighter, and we have a lot more glazing, so there's an immediate sort of feeling of light and space as you enter the main living spaces. They all look out onto this central courtyard, which has a feature steel pergola, which is designed to eventually climb some creepers along it, which will act as a sort of passive solar blind in the, in the summer months, and then in the winter months it will shed its leaves and allow the sunlight to come through. And then as you progress further toward the back, we've got that rear access. So we've got a garage, a workshop, 
and the guest suite for visiting relatives. So in terms of materiality, the addition is a deliberate contrast to the front. We've decided to go for dark cladding. We've used recycled red brick for the pavers, which are recycled from the existing home. So there's a deliberate contrast between the old and new, which is also represented inside the house. In the house we've got cornice detailing at the front is, is kept, but as you go out into sort of the, the back area, which is a more minimalist approach, we've still tried to incorporate some of those references to that Mediterranean style. So we've got terrazzo floors, we've got this stucco render that is in the kitchen, the sort of heritage green cabinetry. It is a minimalist style, but when you incorporate some of these textures, it sort of becomes a bit more homely and a bit warmer. So the kitchen in this house is probably one of the standout features. Features some curved elements, like a curved banquette seat, and the island bench also has curves on it. And what also is quite an interesting design decision is to opt for no overhead cupboards. Typically you'd find every client wants more storage. The clients felt that they had a walk-in pantry and they had plenty of long bench space for drawers, so that's what they focused on. And by removing those overhead cupboards, it allows for a little bit more room for the eye to lift. The space feels a lot less utility and it feels more like a sort of open space that you can congregate around, which is what the clients were focused on. Jess had a, a cool idea to incorporate the overhead range hood as part of the wall. So we built a, a cool enclosure for that and the render continues along the wall to curve around. Typically in a project, you would document it to the nth degree and then you would expect it to be followed as such. With Jess being the client, we were gonna have a bit more flexibility there and I was happy to go along with it. Jess would call me saying, oh, what do you think about this? We'd test it out and it was quite a free flowing process. And we found it was quite fun to be flexible with the ideas and test them out once you're in the space and the building is starting to be constructed. It's the first time I've built my own home and to be honest, I loved it. I think given that circumstances have changed since I renovated here with my two children, so if I was ever to do it again, I'd have to have the time off. I, I don't think I'd be able to manage trying to build a, a house again or renovate a house, leaving my wife to look after two kids. So hopefully I win Tats Lotto so I can do it again. <laughs> Over the last couple of years, I've been working at making sustainable lifestyle changes, whether that's having a more healthy home or reducing my single-use plastic. And what I've found is when it comes to cleaning products, it's very difficult to tick these boxes. However, I came across Blueland, and Blueland makes it easier. So Blueland is unlike traditional liquid cleaners. They choose to do away with wasteful single-use plastic and instead opting for a dissolvable tablet that's about the size of a nickel. And that single-use plastic is eliminated from the entire process, from the bottles, to the tablets, to the wrappers, even to shipping. It is also vegan and cruelty-free, which are big ticks for me. And the ingredients are clean and made without ammonia, VOC, soy and nut, chlorine bleach, and parabens. It is also EPA certified and it meets the very stringent Safer Choices criteria. Here in Australia, a bottle of hand soap could cost anywhere between $5 to $6, sometimes even more. And it comes in a single-use plastic bottle that I have to throw away afterwards, and then buy another one. Thankfully with Blueland, all I really need is this tablet, which is just $2 a tablet, and it's even less when you buy in bulk. Now you're probably thinking, now why should I have to fill up my own bottle of hand soap? Well, it is not that difficult, and I am here to show you how it's done. First, fill up your forever bottle with warm to hot water. Then, drop a single tablet in, and within a few minutes, you can use it. Now I got the Hand Soap Duo, which came with two forever bottles and six tablets, with Perrine Lemon, Iris Agave, 
and lavender eucalyptus, ensuring my hands are not only clean, but they smell nice too. And they have kits for all your home cleaning needs, whether it's for the laundry, washing dishes, or cleaning the home. So if you want to contribute to a cleaner planet, start thinking about cleaning your home and your hands with Blue Land. Click the link in my description and you'll get 20% off your first kit.